Assembling a high quality model steam plant, part one, the individual components of the model steam plant. And on the turntable currently is the boiler part of the plant. And this is a Cotswold Heritage gas fired boiler plant. At this point I would just like to say to the viewers before I get lots of letters, this is not my choice of boiler for this application. The capacity of the boiler is a little bit on the small side to supply steam for these things. The boiler is fitted with a hand pump of course, but it's also going to supply steam to this, Southworth Engine's large duplex boiler feed pump. And I featured this pump in a video a while back because it used to be part of my collection. It's a very nice engine. And by feeding a small amount of compressed air into the pump, you can see how smoothly it runs. The water capacity of this pump is quite high. It's designed of course to feed water into a much larger boiler than the one that I'm using for this plant. So in no time at all it will overfill the boiler. I will need to fit a water bypass valve to this pump so most of the water can be just rerouted back to the tank. And this is the steam engine that I'm hoping this small boiler is going to supply enough steam to run. It's a twin Victoria and once again I featured this in a video as I completely rebuilt this. It was in a bit of a state but now it's not. It runs beautifully. In fact if I turn around this steam union I can put some compressed air into it and briefly show it running. The video on this YouTube channel featuring the repair of this twin Victoria is called Stuart Models Twin Victoria Repair. What I'm about to do now is connect a compressed air line to the engine and show it running. And you'll be pleased to know I'm not going to talk over this bit. The owner of the plant has also supplied this. It's a brass water tank and I'm quite impressed by this. I don't know which company makes this item, but it's very well made indeed. A really nice thing. I'll just show a close up view. I like just about everything about this. The quality of soldering is good. The little tap's quite nice. It has a built in water gauge. It's not fitted with a glass tube, instead it has a plastic tube, which is a good idea because over that length a glass tube would break very easily. The tank is also fitted with a water return inlet, so the pump can return the water to the tank instead of feeding the boiler all the time. The layout of the steam plant. When assembling a collection of components like this, it's really important to sit and think and plan ahead, and not just rush into the job without thinking. The owner of these steam parts for the plant has also supplied an excellent baseboard. This is very substantial and it's not veneered, it's solid wood. All I'm doing at the moment is putting the parts in place on this baseboard to see how they're going to fit. What I will actually do is measure the baseboard and cut a piece of plywood to the same size, mount everything on the piece of plywood and pipe everything up on the piece of plywood and even run the system on the piece of plywood then finally I will use the plywood as a jig to drill the holes in the proper mounting base. As an afterthought the owner asked me to fit a condenser oil trap which of course I will do, I will have to make one. And as regards the layout I would move the boiler to the left I think and fit the condenser oil trap between the engine and the boiler. And the good thing is the steam exhausts are all quite close to where the condenser is going to be. I also need to make an inlet manifold with a couple of taps on one to supply steam to the Victoria and the other one to supply steam to the duplex pump. The owner of this steam plant has also supplied a couple of displacement lubricators which are from Stuart Models and an extra clack also known as a check valve for the water feed to the boiler. I'm looking forward to this because there's nothing to repair and some of the components are absolutely brand new so I shouldn't have a lot of problems. During this series I will of course be making a condenser oil trap a steam turret and a water bypass valve, as well as using an awful lot of copper pipe to pipe all the steam inlets, exhaust outlets and water piping to and from the tank and the boiler. But that's it for now, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.